We are developing new technologies, even better than this. One breakthrough moment is the decoupling of hardware and software. The user can talk to Nomi and say, I want to give feedback. Neo models are more than ordinary. They are elegant, they are powerful and expressive. But above all else, they are smart. Neo's group vice president, Hui Zhang, on the role of hardware and software as key enablers for an innovative domain architecture. The future of user experience defined vehicles is already happening today. Look at this beautiful Neo ET5. We launched this smart EV in Europe three months ago. From the outside, the Neo ET5 looks like a full electric mid-size sedan. By the way, the car designed in Munich, the Neo Global Design Headquarter. But cars might look the same from the outside, although everything happens under the hood. Let's have a look at this amazing transformation of in-car architecture, which can be described as a decoupling of a hardware and software. On the left side, let's call it step one. The vehicle architecture is not smart. Hundreds of functions chaotically connected. That was and still is the legacy of the hardware-oriented car industry. On the right hand, we can see the next step. We call it domain architecture. We see that every car system now have its own network and is a system manager. With the so-called domain, we can reduce the chaotically connected ECUs and the wiring harness. So let me ask, where is the Neo on this picture? With no surprise, on the right side. This is ET5 next to me by his in-car architecture a smart TV or a user experience defined vehicle, like all the new models from day one. Our Neo smart systems are like trees. They grow, they form new shoots, and they shed old leaves. Mark Xu, Neo's executive vice president and chairman of the product committee on the misconception that following existing paths is innovation. Neo's smart system just like the mountains, full of green trees. Today, we're supplying two vehicles, two generations of vehicles already in Europe. The Aspen is for our first generation vehicles, the ES8 in Norway. And the Bayan is for our second generation technology vehicles that we are already supplying in Europe, more countries, especially like Germany. Now, A, Aspen, for the first generation, and B, Bayan for the second generation. Upgradable, deployable, these are very, very essential features of any smart vehicles. Matter of fact, for any smart devices. Now, this is not a technology that we can source from the market. It's just not available. So what we did from the day one, we commit to invest in the full stack digital technology development in-house and working with partners around the globe, including the digital architecture, which is the cornerstone of our future R&D. The roots of the trees are like the software that are embedded, integrated in the control units of the car, while the branches of the trees symbolizes the multiple functions which create the user experiences that beyond the expectation. As you know, a tree is always growing. Like our software, when branches grow, it perfectly symbolizes the update of the functions. But not only that, a tree always and constantly grows new shoots, just again like our constantly delivered new features. Over the last years, both of our trees have grown massively. As of April of 2023, we delivered over 75 FOTA updates 
over 500 function upgrades and 400 new functions to our users and to both of these generations. In another word, our user experiences define the vehicles with the new, new smart system enable us to constantly deliver new and improved experiences and the features anywhere, anytime. Now to do that, we actually only need three things, a smart EV like the ET5, cloud, and a new app. Now the smart EV has the digital architecture that is always connected to the cloud. And when we have a new software to be upgraded, after we've done the testing, validation, prove it's safe and it's robust, we put it in the cloud. Then the cloud will send a signal to any smartphone that has a new app on it to notify our users that the software is getting to you. Or if you don't have a smartphone, it's okay. The software goes to the car directly. Um, now, after you get everything ready, you can start upgrade the vehicle, a click on your smartphone over the air. Now you can do it even from your couch. Let's take a look. All right, the update is available. As a user, I got notified in the car or with my smartphone. Now the software package is downloading to the uh, vehicle through vehicle specific end-to-end -end encryption for the safety and the security onto the smart antenna. The smart antenna collects all the software package and push them to the different domain controllers or ECUs. This is our domain controller for AD, what we call Adam. Actually, it's on the wall. Another domain controller for cockpit domain control for infotainment, in-cabin AIs, car controls, and et cetera, et cetera. And then our connected gateway. The connected gateway then manages the different software branches into the ECUs, other ECUs of all the domain. Now the car is ready, successfully done. The user will get another notification so that they know the car is ready. And now you have a new car. Even if you bought it in 2018, it's still freshest all the time. All right, so when I joined the NEO in 2015, as an early member of the company, uh, we, lots of us came from the automotive industry, so we know this is what we call electrical and electronic architecture. There are many, many ECUs, like we said, but what he didn't say is the ECUs are connected, true, but if you look at these connections, it's almost like a spaghetti. Now think about you want to update a function. Now normally a function is not contributed just by one ECU, it's a combination of many. Now, it's not impossible to upgrade the software in the car. Yes, it is. But the amount of work made it nearly impossible. Okay? So, we decide that if smart gets new to the vision we want, which is create joyful lifestyle for our users, we have to do something about it. We have to make the e architecture much simplified so we can work with it. And not only that, the E architecture is becoming the digital architecture. Um, so we have to find a new way. That's what we did. We created five domain controllers. If you remember, Huey's chart, it is slightly different. Okay? So this one talks a little bit more about what are these five domains we have. Now, first, um, I always go with ADAS first because it's a hot, very hot topic, autonomous drive and the domain controller for infotainment and IVE, and also in-cabin AI. The car is the car, it's not a smartphone. Right? The car has its own feature, attributes, safety, security, driving dynamics. How do you coordinate all the ECUs in the car so when you drive, it's so smooth? That's why we have domain controller for powertrain and also for vehicle control units. Now there's another uh, picture on the wall over there, um, what we call intelligent chassis controllers. So we can coordinate the six dimensions simultaneously, the back and forth, the left and the right, and at the top and down. All right, the last 
but not least, a very important domain control is the body control. That's where you control the lighting, exterior lighting, interior lighting. You control the air conditioning. You control the sea massage. You control the sea ventilation. You control the sea heater, and so on and so forth. The real beauty of this domain control um, concept for digital architecture is with this way. It's no longer spaghetti. Yeah, you break down a big problem into smaller pieces, and then you can manage the smaller pieces. So this is not the end of our digital architecture journey. We're moving forward. This is not good enough for us. We are developing new technologies, even better than this, even simpler, even better decoupling the software versus software and the software versus hardware and the hardware versus hardware. So this is our next generation technology that we're developing. Now, if the technology is evolving so fast, as a car company, if we're not able to capture those momentum, the disruptive technology that is becoming mature, we don't have a reason to be in the market. Updates are a significant part of our lifestyle. At least since we started spending our daily lives connected to our smartphones, the device updates itself over the air. Many vehicles on the market do the same. Only a few of them can also update their firmware wirelessly. The keyword, photo firmware over the air. Benjamin Steinmetz, Neo Europe's product experience director on the advantages of over the air update capabilities and examples of where firmware over the air updates can already be found in Neo models today. Let's start with Nomi. Back in 2015, we already believed that AI, especially voice interaction technology, would grow exponentially. But the key is more than speech, especially inside a car, it feels more like talking to the air. You don't really have a listener, you don't have eye contact, right? We wanted to create a more human interaction. This is why we invented the first in-car physical and eye embodiment you can see on the dashboard over there. With the launch of Benyon, Nomi learned to speak English, German and Norwegian. Now opening of the Innovation Center in Berlin for AI technology will now allow Nomi to learn more languages and become more smarter. Nomi by today plays a crucial role in improving our products. Let's talk about Nomi Feedback. This feature was released in Europe to read direct feedback from the users in the car. So the user can talk to Nomi and say, I want to give feedback. With Nomi Feedback, users can send audio messages directly to my team and explain their wishes. The requirement is then handed over to our developers. As you can see here in the cycle, right? It all starts with the user feedback. Then we go to the requirement, which is created by the product experience team. Then for sure we have the developers. Since we are not developers, we rely, for example, on the Nomi team here in Berlin to develop the new features. Then comes the software testing, right? We need to ensure the quality of the software. But there's one more step, which is also kind of unique to Neo. It's a so-called user acceptance test. There, my team again tests the new feature, not based on software quality, but based on the experience we wanted to create. So is this the right experience we wanted to create? Then, as you know, it goes to the update cycle. You get the notification on your phone and you can experience a new feature. And then it starts all over again, right? It's an infinite loop. We never end. So we, every time we strive to improve and deliver new features. Today, the industry starts talking about over-the-air updates. Software are getting more and more popular. Much more difficult firmware updates. But Neo can do something, which only a few can really do. We call it FOTA, firmware over the air. The Neo smart system has a comparable software architecture to a smartphone. Yoses, the smartphone and the ET5 have much in common. Firmware over the air is comparable to a new iOS or Android version. Updates that influence the hardware, like a new firmware version, would perhaps improve the smartphone battery life, right? A Neo Photo update of our smart EVs can provide a better charging experience or a new suspension setup just to name a few. From now on, Neo plans to push a photo update quarterly, every three months. One example for a photo update is smart charging. This feature leverages the capability to update our control unit since it needs to influence the charging port, the battery system, and the infotainment, all firmware related function. Smart charging helps the user to optimize the charging and decrease the charging cost, right? Quite important in times like these. Why is it smart? because you just set the optimization target, like energy from your solar panels 
or the energy price on the market. When you combine this one with your charging goal and your departure time, Neo Smart Charging guarantees that the car is charge price optimized. Then talking about SOTA, software over the air, it's comparable to an app update. You are updating an app such as Spotify on your phone or downloading a new app. In a nutshell, this is kind of the difference between firmware and software updates. In 2000, William Lee founded at the age of 24 a very successful e-commerce company called BitAuto. As a graduate of a Peking University in sociology, William was an early internet entrepreneur. He fully understood the impact of digitalization. As he founded NEO in 2014, William had the ambition to create a user experience defined vehicle. NEO's smart system is targeted to create experiences beyond expectation for our users. An architecture that unifies software, hardware, algorithm, and the digital services, as we can see from the screen. And yes, NEO is not just a car company. We actually are also a software company. Out of 10,000 men and women working in NEO's R&D centers, 6,000 of them, we are devoted in the software development for digital technology, smart technology.